Anyways, let's move on. Karen attacks black mom and child over movie theater seat and viral TikTok. Yeah, I told you I was going to talk to you about that. So a white woman is being dubbed the Karen after she went off on a black mother and child over a movie theater seat. Please tell me she was uh, she had kids. Because if you took your ass to the movie theater to see Despicable Me 4 by yourself and you got a chip on your shoulder, something's wrong. In a non-viral video, no, I'm sorry, in a now viral video, Aaron Walton recorded the moment the woman attacked her in front of her son during a screening of Despicable Me 4 at the Cinemark Buckland Hill in Manchester, Connecticut. That's close to me. You bastard. Video shows the woman getting in Walton's face and yelling at her over a seat that the boy was sitting in. The woman also appeared to smack Walton's phone during the encounter. Don't touch my phone. Is you crazy, Walton? Why would you fuck up like that? He was doing good. And then here I go saying something wrong. Walton told the woman after telling her to take a step back to give her space. Walton uh, checked her son's ticket to verify their seating and began to move their belongings to different seats. Take some decorum. That's all it takes is decorum, Walton said to the woman. Then she turned around and pulled out the goddamn high. uh, And this is the video. There's no volume. Okay, I'd have smacked the shit out of her when she put her hand near me in my area. This could have went through. What the hell, lady? You really putting your whole body into this shit. And I guess the son decided to, like, uh, calm the shit down. I don't know. But this right here, this ain't right. This, this ain't right. Yeah, you are shaped like a bread box. God dang it. I don't hear shit. You don't hear shit. But I'm going to give you commentary. This is bullshit here. Assaulted. Okay, please. Assaulted at the new... Despicable Me movie with my kids because uh, I don't know what it said. I'm not going to look into that. Walton and the woman then left the theater and went to the lobby. The mother asked an employee for a manager and requested they call the police, knowing that she wanted to press charges against the woman. You're going to press charges on me, the woman said. You're the one who pushed me. Almost definitely Walton uh, responded. In a follow-up video, two police officers appeared to enter the theater where the confrontation occurred. Walton said the woman was ultimately ticketed for disorderly conduct and a public uh, disturbance. Seriously. Um, That damn movie ain't that serious where you got to do all that shit. Seriously. Seriously, it's not. And I don't know what the fuck you been through or how old you had that child, but shit, you look like your ass is a grandma. You really shouldn't be moving that much. And you got push. You better be happy you ain't got a broken hip. I'm just saying. It wasn't called for. That's all I got to say about that bullshit. You really didn't need to do all of that. It could have been like, I'm sorry, but not even I'm sorry, but excuse me. Not even that. You're in my seat. You could have easily said that shit. You're in my seat. Y'all check tickets. Oh, I'm sorry. They take their ass on. That's all it had to be. But instead, you got to be a super bitch. Well, go on, super bitch. Go on. Now you done got a ticket. Oh, if only it was fair. Your ass would be in jail. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. And then the slow got me. So Trump used the N-word, not surprised, over car damage his nephew says. God dang, even your nephew is snitching on you. Ain't no loyalty in your family, and I don't think you deserve it. So a new a nephew of Donald Trump said that the former president, a uh, current felon, once used a, a racial slur after finding damage on his car in the early 1970s. Dude, I thought it was going to be something sooner, but let's see. Let's see. Stop reporting shit that happened 20 years ago. Report shit that happened now, because the bastard said the shit about the dude from the damn apprentice. In the upcoming memoir, All in the Family, you're going to get sued. Uh, the Trumps, the Drumps, and how we got this way. Fred C. Drumpf, I'm sorry, I'll say your name. Trump the third, the former president, the former president, current felon's nephew, recalled a time when the GOP presidential nominee went on a racist tirade over two gashes he found on the roof of his Cadillac Eldorado convertible. Do who did you drive under any trees? That's all I want to know. Niggas, uh, uh, niggers, he probably said. I recall him saying disgustedly, look at what the niggers did with the hard ER, the nephew wrote in the book, per an excerpt 
obtained by the guardian. So the tree is a nigger. Because that's the only thing I could come up with. Ain't nobody that damn interested in your ugly ass unless unless you did something. And then that would make you the nigger because you're the ignorant asshole. I have seen the dictionary. I know what the dictionary says. That's Mary's brother, the same one who was trashing drunk a few years ago. They said they got cheated out of their grandfather's will. They probably did. I wouldn't put it past them. I told you before, girl. Family be doing some shit. You, and it, it hurts that much. Anyways. Donald Trump didn't know who was responsible for the damage, but went straight to the place where people's minds sometimes go when they face a fresh affront across the racial divide, Trump uh, Trump the third said. Of course, I don't see the point of it. It's like, like I said, it probably was a damn tree. Your ass was driving somewhere with some low-hanging fucking branches, and it, it probably snagged the motherfucker. Seriously, and you probably had a cheap one because I really don't think you would shell out that much money, even for yourself, you cheap bastard. Anyways, in a statement, uh, Stephen Chung, a Trump campaign spokesperson, denied the nephew's claims as completely fabricated and total fake news of the highest order, i.e. it happened. It is appalling to lie so blatantly disgusting, can be printed in media, Chung said, and anyone who knows pres uh, former President Trump knows he would never use language and false stories like this have been thoroughly depunked. You're going to get your ass hit by lightning, Mr. Chung, and I just want you to know that um, he got your number too, because you ain't a straight white male, and that damn 2025, I'm just saying. All in the family, the Trumps and how we got this way is set to be released on Tuesday, July 30th. I can tell you safely, I will not be buying that shit. I don't really want to read it. Shit, I didn't buy Steve Harvey's book, but I've read it. Just saying. So uh, before we continue, because this shit's about to get dark, let me do my commercial one more time. This shit's about to get real dark. It's just me and the fam. It's just me and the fam. It's just me and a fam. It's just me and a. It's just me and a fam. Yeah, yeah. It's just me and a fam. Be my little take day. That's mine, girl. That's my past guy. No one's go for hours and some hours till we pass out. Stay inside the house, turn up with the racks out. Stay inside the house, turn. So, uh, yeah, like I said, it's, it it got dark. It got dark real quick. Body of woman whose child said mama was in blood believed to be found. This was reported on the 26th. Here's a picture. This is so damn sad. She looks familiar. Georgia authorities believe they found the remains of a mother who went missing nearly a year ago, people reports. 18-year-old Gabriella Dixon was last seen on October 3rd, 30th in Macon, Georgia. That same day, Reginald Harris, the father of Dixon's children, dropped them off at their grandmother's home. According to a missing persons report, Dixon's two-year-old child told her grandmother that her mama was in blood. The two-year-old's older sibling said, mama is sleeping. These kids are going to seriously need therapy. Shit. Months after Dixon's mother launched a search campaign for her daughter, authorities said Wednesday, uh, July 24th, that human remains were found by a construction crew in a wooded area in Monroe County, Georgia. Officials and family members believe the uh, remains belong to Dixon, citing the red hair and clothing found on the body. Authorities issued an arrest warrant for Harris on a charge of unaliving. Uh, Jeterius D'Angelo Price, who was initially arrested in November on charges of making false statements and tampering with evidence, is also facing charges of conspiracy to commit uh, murder after the remains were found. A GoFundMe campaign launched to raise money uh, for research efforts described Dixon as the mother of two precious little girls who is very brilliant and quiet. Uh, God rest her soul. That is disgusting. What the fuck? Can people just break the fuck up and keep going? Can you just get a divorce and keep it pushing? Why the fuck do you have to just annihilate the other person? Shit, you laid down, you had a baby, and that's all there is to it. Wear a fucking condom or get fixed. But if if you want to lay down, you got to know the fucking uh, results and go on with your business if it doesn't work. I don't give a fuck how angry you get. Go punch a wall or a tree. Shit. Anyways, moving on. Emotional content. 
So two white strangers flashed eight photos at black councilwoman's home. Y'all motherfucking checks can't walk down the street and leave people alone. What the fuck? See, this is why I said the future peace will be achieved when everybody minds their own fucking business. That's never going to happen, so damn it. Ann Arbor, Michigan police are uh, investigating an alleged hate crime involving a city council member, CBS News reports. Councilwoman Cynthia Harrison said she and her husband were at home sleeping last week when they heard someone knocking loudly on their door. I've never really heard anyone knock at my door with such ferocity, Harrison recalled. When Harrison checked her video camera, the councilwoman said two strangers and a photo of an ape. My heart is beating literally out of my chest. I'm trying to process what had happened, and I see two individuals that I don't recognize, Harrison said. Let's stop right there and just say, I'd have had my husband on uh, on the wait with the phone in his hand, with 911 already dialed, just waiting to put sin. Then I would have gave him the signal. Them motherfuckers wouldn't have known what had happened. I'd have just let them knock on the door until the police came and got the ass. The two individuals flashed the eight photo at Harrison's front door just the day after the city council approved a resolution to increase police training on hate crime prevention. So you just don't want to do the, the work, you bastards. And then you wonder why motherfuckers be angry. Shit. Like I said, I would have had the damn phone on the ready. They would have got caught fucking with me. Anyways, uh, though there's no evidence that connect. Wait a minute. Where was I? Oh, oh, up here. You see that as something that shouldn't happen in this day and age. And as the police chief, I found it as disturbing. Chief Andre Anderson said in a statement, though there's no evidence that connects the incident to the hate crime resolution, Harrison believes it was a Ross's attempt to intimidate her. Police said they are still investigating the incident. Might I suggest you get a fence or something or move and make sure that these motherfuckers have to have um, um, permission to come into your yard. I'm just saying, I, I, I would invest in some um, electrified fences. I'm just saying. I know the individual that is primarily responsible is an adult, and that's the focus, the focus, said Anderson. Once again, electrified fence, just saying. Ain't got no business on your goddamn land in the first damn place. They should be glad that you didn't pull one of those uh, Florida stand your ground moves. I mean, they always claiming that shit, but you know, the fuckery ain't over. I thought it was going to be a light night, and then I didn't turn around and scroll further down a news channel, and ooh, look what I found. Hold on. Emotional content. So Miss Kansas Alexis Smith calls out her abuser on stage during a pageant speech. This was reported four days ago. Miss Kansas Alexis Smith is going viral for delivering a powerful speech on domestic violence during the pageant. In a now viral video, Smith, who was crowned Miss Kansas in June, gave a powerful speech about her vision for the organization during the pageant's final interview question. Smith said she would fight against the DV before revealing that her a yeah, her person was in the audience. My vision as the next Miss Kansas is to eliminate the unhealthy and abusive relationships, Smith said. Matter of fact, some of you out in the audience saw me very emotional because my abuser is here today. But that's not going to stop me from being on this Miss Kansas stage from representing as the next Miss Kansas because I and my community deserve healthy relationships. You're damn right. There she is looking beautiful. Uh, she went ahead and respect reclaimed is about reclaiming your power and standing firmly in it. Well, stand in it, lady. In an Instagram post, um, Smith said the night of the pageant took an unexpected turn when someone I have been healing from tried to disrupt my peace. Instead of falling into silence, I chose to live out my vision for a better world. I took back my power, not just for myself, but for my dreams and everyone watching and listening, she added. Smith noted that sharing her experience wasn't about shunning others, but instead turning her pain into purpose and channeling it in a way that unifies and uplifts. Uh, the recently crowned Miss Kansas is set to compete in the Miss America pageant in January. Damn you better. She, yeah, she is. She's very brave and very beautiful. And it's about damn time people start getting their peace back. Shit, I'm learning now to stop letting people fuck with my peace. <laughs>